After driving for about 10 minutes, the cop car they were driving started to make a weird clunking sound. It didn't sound good. Since it was a sign of the part and the car was starting to malfunction, it most likely will break down. Sam prayed that it would last until they got to the state prison, but unfortunately the car broke down when they were at least five blocks away from the state prison. Sorry girls, it looks like this cop car has had it, Sam said getting out of the police car, along with Clover and Alex to see what was wrong with the car. As Sam popped the hood off the car, she looked to see that the brakes were not only broken, but were also a few of the car parts as well. Since none of them were mechanics, they also had no knowledge or the right tools or parts to fix it. If they were, they wouldn't have much luck without a garage with tools. Where is the state prison? I know we're about five blocks away, Alex commented. There's a church not far from the state prison. Let's see if they have any clues. Clover pointed at the big chapel about 15 feet away from them, so the spies headed in that direction. Once inside the church, Sam along with her friends find the church to be empty, to which that was expected, since Silent Hill was full of evil demons and monsters, so who would want to stay at Silent Hill? Seeing the church was empty gave the spies a chance to search through the church without anyone attacking them by surprise. While searching for the clues around the church, they were hearing voices of what sounded like demonic talking and from whispers to screams. While the demonic sounds were as hearing as unsettling, they kept their guard up while looking for clues. Eventually Sam went upstairs to find the church and a locked door that had a room that had been hiding. Sam thought that someone could be hiding a deep secret within Silent Hill, but then why would someone lock it in a room in a church? Out of all the weird places, a church was one of them. That Sam never thought anyone would hide it, anything in. So she began to kick down the door, to which it was very weak, and it gave away and opened the room Sam wanted access to. So as she entered the room, she saw that there was a locked safe located at the desk was in the room. Curious, she headed towards the safe on the desk. Once she got to the safe, she tried to do uh, the uh, combination code, the one she came up with, but it failed as it was still locked. Damn, Sam cursed. Whoever set a combination up for the safe sure did a damn good job on making sure no one gets in. Sam started to search around the room, hopefully to find a combination number. While searching through the desk and drawers, she found a piece of paper that looked like it was torn apart while being burned on in fire. 6701482, Sam said while reading the combination number. That must be for the safe, Alex stated. It sure looked like it. I'm going to see if it works. Sam headed back over towards the safe and punched in the combination code. After she put the code in, she checked the safe to which it signaled that the safe was open. Sam opened the safe to find a few papers, mainly those that resemble Silent Hill attractions, etc. Nothing seemed to be very exciting or have anything related to the mission. However, Clover noticed a USB drive inside the safe. Check out this USB drive. Guess someone has been keeping secrets much. Clover commented as she handed Sam the USB drive. Once Sam had the USB, she headed for the front of the desk of the church. Once she was there, she looked around to find anyone or anything in front of the church entrance, but could only find nothing. They kept searching for the rest of the church, hoping to find some clues, but eventually they ran out of luck as they didn't find anything else. Nothing else from the church as far as I can see. We should head back out and continue to find the state prison. Sam stated as she heard a sound that made the girls jump. In the corner of the church was a broken door. It appeared to be made out of wood as well. The broken door was off, broken off its hinges as a creature emerged from the other room. It was haunched over with spikes on its back and had claws that dragged along the ground. It was another creature that resided in Silent Hill, but none of the girls could identify what creature it was. Let's get the fuck out of here! Clover exclaimed as she, Alex, and Sam ran out of the church as fast as they could. As they ran for out of the church, they looked at the entrance of the church to see a creature moving slowly towards them. Since the creature wasn't very fast, the spies could outrun it easily without having it to catch up to them. They didn't stop to find out as Sam shot its limbs with her magnum, hoping that they would slow the creature down and prevent it from getting anywhere near anyone. 
The girls ran down one block until they saw a sign. It stated that the Silent Hill State Prison was only a few blocks away, to which it seemed closer to the spies. They were some of the houses that were boarded up. However, none of the girls knew if there was anyone living there. Maybe some people may be alive. I see that their windows and doors and that are boarded up. Did up? Clover pointed it out. That could be why I'm not seeing anyone, Sam stated. Either that, or they'll just flee from this place boarded up to make it look like they're abandoned. Well, this place is getting blown up from what Dean said, so I guess it doesn't really matter anymore, Alex replied. I see the state prison. Follow me, Clover instructed, as she and the girls followed her down the street. They were getting closer to the state prison, wondering if Mandy was in there. You think Mandy's in there? Alex asked. Sure hope so, despite her being a bully, but we still have to make sure she is safe, Sam replied as the girls got towards the front gates of the state prison. Since the fence and the gates were electric, they would have to find another way around the electric force. Damn it! The fence and the gates are electric. There's no way to climb over it, Sam cursed. There has to be a way to shut it off, or at least burst our way in, Alex stated. As Clover looked to the left, there was an officer who had been lying dead for at most a few days or so. She headed over towards the dead body, searching for something that may help them get through the gates to the state prison. I don't see anyone operating the system, but it seems like this place is deserted. How could this place still have power, though? Sam asked. That doesn't make any sense, Alex added. Clover then found a car key to inside the dead body that may be the key to get inside the state prison gates. I found something. It looks like a card key, Clover said, catching her friend's attention. What kind of card key is this? Alex asked. It looks like that card key that may get us inside the state prison, Sam added. Only one way to find out, Clover stated. Then she headed for the gate entrance, where there was a little machine besides the gate. When Clover slid the car key in, she waited for a few moments before the machine beeped. Once the beep was heard, Clover took the car key out. As the gates stood open to the state prison, this amazed Alex and Sam, since they weren't sure if the car key would work for the gates or not. But it sure did. The car key really worked, Alex said in amazement. That sure did. Now, let's head it inside. Clover replied as the girls headed inside the state prison. While walking inside the state prison building, they could tell that it was dead silent inside. Sam along with Clover and Alex looked around the front entrance, looking for a possible way to know where Mandy was, holding in if she was in a prison cell. While looking at the front entrance of the state prison, Sam found a room to which it was a room where anyone's possessions were kept when people were sent to prison. The room was empty, but when Sam tried to open the door, it was locked. Luckily with her lockpick, Sam was able to break the lock and get the door to, to open once she got it open. They headed inside the room to search for clues. The room was square-shaped, to which it was decently small, but not too small for the girls to fit in. What room is this? Alex asked, unsure of this room she was called to begin with. This looks to be a room where people confiscate your possessions whenever you're sent to prison. Now, let's see if they have anything useful, Sam said. While the girls were searching for the room, Sam found a computer that looked like it still worked. She turned on the computer and then waited for a few moments for the computer just to boot up. As the computer was on the login screen, Sam looked to see a password written on a piece of paper, to which it was stained with blood. She picked up the paper, then looked at the computer, and typed in the password before on the login screen. After she pressed the enter key, the computer logged her in within a minute of waiting. Since the computer was Windows 7, it was a bit slow, but it still worked nevertheless. You found a working computer? Alex asked, as she and Clover noticed that Sam was on the computer. With the USB drive in hand, we could surely see if there's anything that can help us track down Mandy, Sam answered, as she saw a desktop shortcut and it said, Cameras of the Prison. She clicked on it and then waited for it to load. This computer does have security cameras? Clover asked. It is. Watch all the security footage from the prison. Maybe I hope we could find out where Mandy is at, Sam said, as the security cameras popped open a window to show all the security cameras in the prison in motion. They were all working thankfully. 
So after checking each security camera, Sam found one that was listed as cell 71, fourth floor. The footage showed a figure inside the prison, to which it was a female inmate. However, upon closer inspection, it was Mandy, and she was out cold. I found Mandy. She looked as if she's been knocked out cold and doesn't look good, Sam stated. Oh my god, I just hope she's okay and not dead, Clover added, covering her mouth with both of her hands. Wow, now I really feel bad for her. I just hope she's okay, Alex added. We have to go to the fourth floor and find cell 71. That's where she is, Sam stated. When she looked at the key rack of the state prison, she knew that Mandy's cell would most likely be locked, so they would need to find some keys just to break Mandy out of her cell. Which key is it? Sam asked herself, as she read all the labels of each key it had. There were so many keys, so it would take a while to figure it out. After searching the key rack, she found a set of keys that were from cell 55 to cell 75. She grabbed a key ring from the rack, knowing that each of the keys had cell numbers carved into them. Since the numbers were carved into the keys, that would help them figure out which key would fit into cell 71. A key ring, but all those keys would take us way too long to find out which key will work for cell 71, Clover said. Relax, Clover. I found a key that has 71 carved into it, so this key from the ring will open cell 71. Sam reassured Clover as she, along with her friends, exited out of the confiscation room. They headed down the hallway to find a set of stairs, so they ended up climbing the stairs up, only to get chased by a creature that was native to Silent Hill. The creature was some sort of man with four arms, but man, he was really fast. However, within a few minutes of battling, the girls killed the creature with a shotgun blast to the head. After dealing with the creature that attacked them, the spies made it to the fourth floor of the state prison, to which the cells were from cell 50 to cell 80. They looked at each of the cell rooms, and they were steel and bulletproof, to which it would prevent anyone from breaking out or in their cell. Nothing in these cells, aside from the dead bodies of creatures, Clover said, while looking through one of the windows. Some of these cells look dirty on the floor. It looks as if this prison hasn't been used in a long time, Sam added. But how could that be the case if the power's still on in this prison? Alex asked. That's what I wonder too. But however, I do know Mandy's here, so we need to get her out before blowing this place up, Sam instruction, as she and her friends walk down the hallway just to find cell 71. Once they approach the cell, the girls looked inside to find Mandy passed out on the cot of the prison. Sam used her key for cell 71 and then opened the door to let herself and her friends inside. While inside the cell, Mandy's pulse was checked by Clover, to which it was really weak due to the cold. Clover said that she was getting cold and that they needed to get her someplace warm. Sam instructed that they take Mandy back to the entrance of the state prison and then warm her up as best they could so they can before calling for Whoop just to take Mandy home. The entrance of the state prison had a room where the blankets are given, so Clover wrapped Mandy in a few blankets in hopes that it would warm her up. While trying to keep her body warm, Sam got a call that Dean had all the bombs set up and ready to blow up Silent Hill when the girls were ready to leave. Sam told Dean to send in Whoop in to pick them up as they had found Mandy and they were located at the state prison. After Sam got off her axe powder, Mandy slowly began opening her eyes. She was in a lot of pain from the bruising and injuries she had suffered when the beatings took place, but she looked around. Then, she looked to see that her enemies were there. Uh, where am I? Mandy asked weakly. Shh. Clover hushed, making sure Mandy was calm. You're free and safe now. As Clover told Mandy that, she would normally blow up at the girls' faces whenever she was upset or angry about something, but due to her being in so much pain, she didn't have the will or energy to get angry or anything. All Mandy could do was cry. Not the cry she would do like a brat would, but crying as if she lost someone really close to her. Mandy hugged Clover and cried in her arms. This surprised the girl since Mandy was a person who never really did that at all. Clover held Mandy in her arms and all she could do was to comfort Mandy while she cried. I never knew Mandy could cry like that. It's as if she lost someone close to her, Alex said to Sam. 
She's crying because she feels it. It's not the usual crying like if she didn't get a toy or whatever, Sam replied. We're getting help, Mandy, and you're going to go home, Clover said. As Mandy looked at Clover, her face really showed that she was really sad and not faking it like she usually did. Where's Caitlin? Where's Dominique? Sam Sam looked at Mandy as Mandy asked that, and she looked around, but she didn't see two of her friends around her, afraid the worst was yet to come. Hate to be the bearer of bad news, Mandy, but... Sam stood. While finding the right words to break the news and sad ones to her enemy, Dominique is dead. However, Caitlin, she's alive and okay, but she's back in Beverly Hills in the hospital. After breaking the news to Mandy, she couldn't believe one of her best friends was dead. Dominique was killed by after sustaining so many injuries from the creatures and beatings that she had in Silent Hill. However, she was glad that Caitlin was alive, but injured. Dominique? What did she say? Mandy asked weakly. She told us to look after you and Caitlin. I know we aren't on the best terms back then, but after this, maybe we could start anew together. But that's only if you want to, Sam replied. As Mandy continued to cry, she couldn't believe that the spies were being nice to her. After all, she went through hell staying at Silent Hill and sustaining such beatings. Mandy is in no mood to speak much. She'll need some treatment back at the hospital at home, Alex stated. Yeah, she's been through a lot while staying here, Clover said. As Jerry along with Brittany and Dean arrived at the front of the state prison, they walked inside through the doors. Excellent work, ladies. We have found the other people hiding in Silent Hill. They will be located the other towns and cities, Jerry stated. How is she? Brittany asked Clover about Mandy. She's broken, crying, injured, went through a lot in just one day or so, Clover replied as Mandy carried Mandy towards the helicopter outside of the state prison. She and Caitlin would be okay. However, it will not be the same without Dominique. She did change at least a little bit before she died, Sam said. If Dominique can change, then so can Caitlin and Mandy, with the help from therapy, of course. Maybe a psychiatrist yes, or psychologist or whatever, Alex added. Since the girls left state prison with Jerry and the other Whoop agents, and then the helicopter took off with the girls as they left Silent Hill. Once the helicopter got as far away from Silent Hill, the bombs detonated, and every building in Silent Hill was ablaze. All the buildings were thrown, blown into pieces. The monsters of Silent Hill were also perished in the flames and from detonation shins from the bombs. With Silent Hill being blown up and gone, the spy's mission was a success.